Got another set of questions for the amount of substance topic and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay so make a start so the first question is an ideal gas question we've got the pressure we've got the temperature and we can calculate the moles of pH3 formed from the amount of moles of H3PO3 that's reacted. So to get the moles of pH3, we're just using the ratio between H3PO3 and pH3. See, it's 4 to 1. So we divide the moles of the acid by 4, and we get the moles of pH3. So we'll bring in the ideal gas equation and rearrange for V. So we get NRT over P. So we'll just put the numbers in. So we'll just be careful with the unit conversions. So we've just calculated the moles, R, 8.314. Temperature needs to be in Kelvin. They've given it in degrees C. So we need to add 273 onto that. So we get the 473. Pressure needs to be in Pascals, but they've given it in kilopascals. So we've got 100,000 Pascals of pressure. So that's given us a volume of 3.146 times 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed. The volume units for the ideal gas equation are meters cubed. So just be aware of that. So we need to convert it to centimeters cubed so we need to multiply by 10 to the minus 6, or divide by a million. So that gives 314.6 centimetres cubed, or you could have said 315 centimetres cubed. So moving up the titration now, so you can see I've got my usual diagram to visualise the information. So they've dissolved this many grams of A into 250 cm cubed. It's gone into the burette and it's titrated against this volume of this concentration, sodium hydroxide. Mean titrate, 27.30 cm cubed. And the mole ratio for the reaction is given here. So we're not given the equation, we're given the mole ratio. First thing we're going to do is work out the moles of sodium hydroxide, such as concentration times volume, but remember to put the volume into decimeters cubed. So that's coming out at 2.8 times 10 to the minus 3. So the moles of A that must have been present in the main titra, it'll be half of that, which is obviously 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3. So now we need to work out how many moles were in the 250 cm cubed, which is going to be the same as the moles in the 1.513 grams. So to do that, we divide by the main titra. So that's going to give us the moles in 1 cm cubed and then multiply by 250, which gives 0.0128. And obviously to get the MR, we take the mass, divide by those moles we've just calculated, and we've got to give the answer to the nearest whole number, 118 grams per mole. So moving on to the structure now. So we're told there's two COH groups in A, so that adds up to an MR of 90. We've just worked out the MR of A is 118, so the difference between those two is 28. So that's going to be some carbon and hydrogen between those two COH groups. So there's a couple of possible structures, so there's one, so there's that 28 there, that CH2CH2 group. Or you could have that where you've got a central carbon with a methyl and a hydrogen, still got that MR of 28. Moving on to the percentage yield question, so we're told that the students use 0.15 moles of butan-1-ol and it's a 61.4 percentage yield of this 1-bromobutane. So the first thing we're going to do is work out how many moles of 1-bromobutane must have been formed. So obviously because of that 1 to 1 ratio we'd expect that many moles of product to form but we're only going to get 61.4 percent of that. So to get the moles of 1-bromobutane formed we take the percentage yield, so I've just decimalised it, multiply by the expected moles, so that's how many moles are going to form, and then all we need to do is turn that into grams by multiplying by the MR of that, which to three significant figures is 12.6 grams. 